Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Minecraft Create Mod where we are going to be doing the seemingly impossible, we are going to be turning cobblestone into gold. And by that I do of course mean we're going to be making a farm. This farm to be precise just here, which is less complicated than it looks and I've obviously designed it because I want it to be the sort of farm that will fit up against a factory wall as you can see. So what are we doing? We are taking lava and turning it into cobble just underneath here. We are then crushing that up into gravel. We're then crushing our gravel into sand. We are then washing our sand into clay, which we are crushing into clay blocks. They are then getting cooked up and being turned into terracotta, which is then crushed down into red sand, which is then washed and it becomes gold and dead bushes which is quite a large number of processes, seven to be exact, but none of them are particularly challenging and this is a reasonably quick farm to set up and good if you just need to get some more gold on the go. This farm is also powered by one very large windmill which you can see up there, that is using 72 sails and it is able to run at a speed of 64 revolutions per minute. If you wanted it to go faster, you could of course add some more sails to it, or you could just power it using a steam engine round the back as well. So let's have a little look at what we need to actually make our farm. And as you can see, it is using brass and it is going to use a precision mechanism in the rotation speed controller. So you are going to need to have at least gone to the nether to get yourself a blaze burner at some point. And it also uses crushing wheels as well. So it's certainly not exactly the cheapest of farms. It's just a nice and effective one. But let's make a start and have a look at what we actually need to do to make this farm. And the first thing you're going to want to do is A, select the wall to build it against, but then you're going to need to get some building blocks and make a row of 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Onto those you can place a shaft and then skip two blocks, place a shaft, skip two, going all the way back to the beginning. So you've now got four shafts in there, evenly spaced with two apart. And then you can just put a belt between all of those. So looking at your belt from the front, the left hand side is where your gold is going to be gathering. So we need to place a chest on this last shaft in order for that to be gathered into. On the next shaft along, we can place down a millstone. Then you're going to place down a basin over the next one with a mechanical press going into it. So you'll need to just walk up to your basin, crouch, jump, and then click over the top of it. When you go back and have a look at your mechanical press, you just want to make sure that that shaft in the middle there is pointing towards you, not off to the side or anything like that. And then we just need to place another chest over this very first shaft here. That's where the sand and gravel are going to be coming into. Once you've reached this point, we then need to brass funnel them up. So on this chest, you do need to place a brass funnel just on this side. That's actually where the flint is going to fall out of, and we're going to destroy that in some lava. And then going down, we just need to place brass funnels on each side of our little implements, just like so. And then just one last one on this final chest. Okay, so we should have something looking roughly like this around now. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up our crushing wheels over the top of our chest on the right. So what we need to do is we walk up to our chest. You'll need to crouch and jump when you place down a chute on top of it. Otherwise, you'll just open up the chest. And then from there, we need to place our crushing wheels so that they are above our chute. And the easiest way I find to do this is to come around the back, build just off to either side of the chute like so, and then we're just going to build up above it with three little blocks so that when you come back around, you've got this sort of U shape built around the back of the chute. And that just gives you a bit of a framework that you can then place your crushing wheels up against by going to the blocks that are just one above the chute on either side of it and then skip a block and then place them on the ones above as well. If you actually try to place them too close, it just won't be able to place it. You just need to make sure that you are skipping a block before you place down that next wheel. And so you should have four wheels arranged directly above your chute just like so. From there then you can place another chute that goes directly into the centre of these two wheels and from here you can knock out these little building blocks that you put in before. These are not needed, they were just there to make life a little bit easier. What we are going to do now though, and still around the back of our contraption, is you can place a single building block up against this chute, and then we're going to build another eight off to the side of it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
and then if we come back around the front of our contraption we can start placing in some shafts. So what we need to do is place one shaft right up against our chute just there, then skip a block, place another shaft down and then go right to the very end and place one just there and then link all of them up with a belt. Just like so. Then we can place a chest up on top of our chute and into that we can have an andesite funnel going so that's where all of our cobble is going to go in to start the process. And the last of our process components we need to make now is just a nice cobble generator over the top of this belt. So what we're going to do is if you come alongside your andesite funnel and have a look at those building blocks you put behind there, you can place down one little building block just on the block that is one over from the andesite and then do five mechanical drills going in a row right across and then cap it off again with another stone brick. And then we can come forwards by two blocks so we're now just in front of our belt and we're going to put five stairs so that they line up in front of these drills. And then we can cap it off again with some more stone. We can then take some trapdoors and you can place them one in front of each of these stairs and then waterlog each of the stairs so that the cobble has somewhere that it can generate. But it still looks good when you're looking at it from the front. I like being able to see the water there just so that I know it's there and it's in use. From there then we can just build up a bit of a ring going around here using some stone over the top of each of the blocks we've already placed. And that's going to give us just somewhere where we can put our lava. You'll just need one little source block right there in the middle. It will spread out to both sides so it's be able to feed all of those drills. And there we go, just like so. And that is the last of our processing components for our farm that we need to get sorted though. So now we're going to have our cobble able to go into our chest. You don't need to have a chute in between these four wheels, it will automatically fall down between the two wheels straight there, but you do need the chutes just to take things into and out of the chests. And of course this is where our flint is going to be falling out as well, so you will want to place a little bit of lava just underneath that, just so that we've got somewhere where it can be destroyed. Unless of course you actually want to save the flint, in which case just leave this stage out. But the last thing we need to do now is we need to get everything powered up. Remembering, of course, that we want this to be able to sit against a wall, so we need to make sure that all of our powering is at least one block back so that we've got space for decorating. Some things will need to go right up against these components just to make sure everything works, but let's try and make sure it is solid when you look at it, it doesn't want to have see-through bits. And the first thing we're going to get powered is actually going to be some fans we haven't even placed yet. And that is because if we just have a little look over here, so we know that the cobble is coming through, it then gets crushed into gravel by the first set of wheels, who then drop down and it gets crushed into sand by the second set of wheels. So going into this chest, if we just have a quick little look at JEI, we can see gravel, crushed down by wheels, it becomes sand, flint and clay balls. Flint, that's our refuse, we don't want that, that's just something to bin, we're going to be chucking that out the side and burning it up. But we do want the sand and the clay to go through, but we need the sand to become more clay balls. So what we need to do is we need to wash sand at this point into clay before it goes into the basin. So to do that, we just come back over underneath this one to this third one of your brass funnels. You can dig down by three blocks underneath it. So one, two and three. Place down a water wheel at the bottom place an encased fan on top of that so you've got one little air space between the fan and your belt. If you then dig down alongside it, so there's our water wheel down at the bottom, and take out the block that is next to it, when you place a water source next to your wheel right down at the bottom, it will power and it will start pushing this fan around as well as you can see. Now when I block this off, and I place some water just in that gap, it's going to be able to push the water up through and we can use that to wash down our sand into clay. Much the same sort of thing is going to happen once those clay balls go into this basin. They are then going to get squashed up by our mechanical press into clay blocks and now they need to be baked into terracotta before they get crushed up. So once again we're going to dig down by three blocks directly underneath this one, two, three, four, this fifth of our brass funnels. Place down a water wheel down at the bottom. Onto that, place a fan. And 
again, dig down to the side of it by one and place down the water bucket at the bottom to power it. It should be blowing. Make sure that when that fan turns, all those little particles are wafting up, not going down. Then when you block this up and we place some lava there, it's now going to be able to cook the clay blocks once they reach this point where they will then turn into terracotta. And then last but by no means least, those terracotta blocks are going to get crushed up into red sand. They need to be washed into gold and dead bushes just here. So seeing as we've done before, we're just going to dig down by three blocks before the last of these funnels. Place a little water wheel down at the bottom, place a fan on top of that, dig alongside it, place our water bucket. That's going to start wafting around and pushing the air up. And then again, block it off, place our water, and that's a little washing station for us. Okay, so let's have a look at getting all these other bits and pieces powered as well now. What we're going to do is we're just going to come running around the back and we're actually just going to remove these building blocks that you can see. They're only temporary and they're a little bit in the way now. So our little millstone here, that's going to be nice and easy to power directly from the belt. If we just place down a vertical gearbox next to it and then a small cogwheel on top, that will automatically sort of interlace with the little cog that's inside that mill and be able to power that one for us. We can then come straight over to our basin and we need to get power up to this mechanical press and we can do it in much the same way. So just using a vertical gearbox, a couple of shafts, one on top of the other and then another vertical gearbox, just making sure that those little shafts that you can see around the outside are going into our component that we want to actually power. Just making sure it's actually going into that other shaft just there. That way, again, as soon as this belt is moving, it is now going to be able to power that as well. And the really nice thing about how Create works is that you might think, oh, this shaft is going to be really in the way. It's going to form one of those see-through bits that we don't want because it's going to be within our wall. But actually, if we just come over and we grab hold of andesite casing, what you can do is you can just hover over the shaft right click and it will fill the space in with the shaft still there. It's still going up. It's still being able to function. So that is brilliant. Just for making sure we don't have any gaps and you can do exactly the same thing as well with the little cogwheel. There you go. He's now all blocked in. So he's not going to form any gaps that we can see through. Okay. So last thing we need to power now is these drills up at the top and their corresponding belt and also these crushing wheels as well. Well, the drills up at the top are nice and easy. We can just line up a bunch of cogs along the back of them. So now one power is going into at least one of these cogs. It will power all of the rest of them as well. And then if we come down underneath this first of our drill and cog combo, remove that block, we'll see there is a little shaft there already in our belt, ready to bring power back from it. We can then add a shaft onto the end of that cog and onto the end of the shaft as well. And this is lining up quite nicely with this little array here that we've got powering our mechanical press and the belt down at the bottom. So we can probably just link these ones up. So if we just pop in a couple of shafts there. They link up nicely and then we can run a belt in between the lot of them so that now once one is powered, the other is powered as well. And conveniently, we're far enough away from the wall that it's still nice and clear. From here then, we now need to get power over to our crushing wheels. We're going to do that by lining up some gearboxes just along the, on the left hand set of our wheels. And on the right hand, we will pop down a belt in between these ones instead. And the reason why we've done that is because we need our wheels to move against each other, not all of them going in the same direction. And having those gearboxes just allows us to do that. So now what we need to do is we just need to link power up between these and this belt as well, and then everything should be connected to each other. And we can do that easy enough, once again, by just having a little row of cogs running along here. So we'll just range these ones along. There we go. And then pop a shaft in this belt, and everything should now be connected to everything else. And what that means, though, with everything being so interconnected, is that we can put power into this contraption literally anywhere at this point, and the whole thing will be able to run because everything is linked to everything else. And so, though, because I'm going to be building a nice big windmill on the top, it might as well be towards the top of the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it just straight off this little gear just here. What I'm going to do is I'll pop in a clutch first. That's just so that this contraption could be switched on and off. And then it's going to go straight into a rotation speed controller, simply because 
windmills aren't all that fast and I want this to be able to turn as quickly as possible, least 64 RPM, just so that we can get a reasonable rate from it. What we can do though, so we've got our speed controller in place, pop our big wheel into the top of it and then I will just build up a windmill up to the top. Remembering of course that it is going to need 72 sails in order to run. Mm, that'll be high enough and I'll just build a little windmill up here. Okay, so that is the entire windmill built up. It is obviously a rather large windmill. It has 18 sails on each of its four sides. So you will probably want to have a nice wool farm set up before you make a windmill of this sort of size, and it can run across steam engines as well, but it should all be ready to go. So if I come and power this now, just by right clicking on this windmill bearing with an empty hand, everything should start to move. Let's see what is going on. That is all moving in the right direction. These are moving in the right direction. Everything is moving through. Now at the moment, we've got nothing set up filters wise. We just know that everything is good to go. Right, let's switch them off. And let's get our filters sorted off as our very last job. First things first, this one needs to be filtering flint. All the flint that comes into this chest, we want it to come straight out of here and plop straight into the lava. So what we can do, so we can come down to the bottom of our create menu, we can grab ourselves a little list filter, and we're going to need to have flint ready to go. So we pop that in there. So now if we come out, we just have our cursor over the list filter, and then we right click somewhere. It will bring it open with its own little HUD, and we can drag flint over, pop him in there, Press yes, and then we're just going to place that onto here. So what will happen now, all flint will come out and go straight into this little lava pit. Out of this side then, we need the other products to come out, which is going to be sand and clay. So let's set this one up for sand and clay. There we go. And so now we can place that little filter onto this side. We want the clay to be able to go straight through here, but we want the sand to stop and get washed. So we need to make sure that this filter is only accepting clay. So what we can do is we will just take the sand straight off. So only clay can now go through here. Place that onto that, so that is just going to be allowing clay through. Sand is going to be forced to stop and get washed. A funny feeling, we're about to have a thunderstorm, so we'll get rid of that. So we've got our clay has gone into here, it's then going to get crushed down into clay blocks by our mechanical press, and out the other side we want there to come just the clay blocks. So what we'll do is we'll set another filter, clay, block. And there we go, only clay blocks are coming out, we want the clay blocks to stop, they need to get cooked up into terracotta, so the next filter needs to be terracotta. Just the standard one, not any of the coloured varieties, that one will do. Terracotta's gone in, that's got ground up, coming out the other side, we want it to make sure it is red sand and nothing else. Red and... it's red sand. There he is. Pop that one into there, red sand comes out, and then last but by no means least, we need that to get washed down into gold and dead bushes. So we will have the gold, gold nuggets, and dead bushes. You do have to add in the dead bushes, otherwise they'll just get stuck on the conveyor belt, so just make sure they are added in there, whether you are planning on keeping them or not. I quite like them, so I'm happy for them to be kept. And the only remaining thing we need to do now with these filters is just a little bit of management of numbers. If you allow everything to just run through as it is, you'll find that because individual pieces of sand come through and start to wash down, or individual pieces of clay come through, things can start to get a little bit blocked up. The good thing about these brass funnels is that you can set how much comes through at once. And we want 16 to be coming through at a time, not just one. So everywhere where you've got an output, so coming out from this chest, just hover your cursor over the filter, hold down the right mouse button and set it to exactly 16 for each of them. So it doesn't matter if it's an input, that's fine. But where we come out of the basin, 
set to exactly 16. Same with the mail, where it comes out, set to exactly 16. And then that way you'll find you just don't end up with a backlog anywhere where things are going to start sort of sitting and waiting and causing problems. And now though, everything is set up, everything is ready to run, everything is filtering as it should do. The very last thing to do, the very, very last thing, is to place a lever somewhere on your clutch just so that you can switch it on and off easily enough. So now if we come up and we activate the whole farm again, if I decide, you know what, that's fine, it's causing lag, there's stuff, if there's too much going on, you just don't want the noise, ah, we can just switch the whole thing off and it can just sit and wait to be put back on again. And so now though, with everything up and working, the last thing we need to do is a nice little bit of decorating. The fun side of all of this, it's all made up now, just get to make it look nice and pretty. And there you go, just like that. One red theme of decorated farm as opposed to a grey theme of decorated farm over here. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video where we have turned cobblestone into gold in a seemingly impossible manoeuvre that is of course nice and easy when you're using Create. Happy Minecrafting everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!